next recorded lecture uh, for your next concept in econ. So we're going to talk about trade this week. You guys have already kind of dealt with specialization, um, and now we're going to move on. So same procedure as last time. I'm just going to go through the background of the concept itself, and then I'll introduce what you should be doing throughout the week. All right, so a little bit of background on trade. I mean, it is a concept that we are all familiar with. You can boil it down to the simplest of interactions. If person A has one thing and person B has another thing, well, they have the ability to voluntarily exchange or trade those things with each other and hopefully walk out better off than they uh, started. All right, if you, one person has, say, um, Doritos, another person has, say, sour cream cheddar ruffles, maybe they want to trade with each other and get the different chips that they actually want rather than the ones they already have. Um, the big thing here is understanding that trade in econ is more along the lines of the bigger scale. You're talking about exchanges of ideas, goods, services, capital between countries or organizations. Uh, but nevertheless, you can still boil it down to simple human interactions themselves. Um, the idea, it, it translates no matter what the level is. It's just about exchanging one thing for another thing and trying to come out uh, better off than you than you started so a little bit more here again thinking about econ specifically in the case of individuals exchange it's not going to happen unless both parties actually benefit i'm not going to trade with you for something unless i actually get something out of that and vice versa you're not going to trade with me unless you get something out of it all right that's just kind of how the the situation works when you're talking about individual people but when you're talking about countries, which trade more or less is discussed regarding, it's it's a bigger umbrella effect, right? You're talking about multiple layers of people and organizations who actually do benefit when countries trade with one another. You're talking about, um, again, influx of capital. You're talking influx of ideas, of people, of goods, of services. Um, more times than not, when countries trade with one another, everybody actually ends up benefiting from that situation because it's it drives up competition, it makes things more efficient. Um, that exchange of ideas, goods, services, capital can actually benefit a lot of people. However, the underlying reality is that despite all the good benefits that trade can bring to countries who, you know, obviously trade with one another, governments still try to restrict trade um, more often than not. This is where you're talking about tariffs, uh, trade restrictions, um, kind of poor trade relationships with different countries. Um, even though it's kind of been generally said that free trade actually benefits everybody, uh, the government restrictions are still pretty darn common. So here's the boil down version. Again, trade is something you guys should know pretty well. It's simply trading of something for something else. I have something, you have something else, we meet, we exchange those things, and then we leave. All right? It could be one good for another good, one good for money, a good for service, a service for a good, money for a service, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's an exchange of things. Right? It's not always just physical items, but it can be money, services, et cetera. Um, more times than not, people or civilizations or organizations, you name it, usually will trade things that they actually have too much of for something that they don't have enough of. Right? So that could be um, talking about countries around the world who have large oil supplies, they'll trade oil for capital to invest in their economies or infrastructure or uh, various other things. Maybe it's uh, military supplies, you name it. Usually you go from trading something you have a lot of to try to get something you don't have a lot of. Uh, here's the crash course. Please go ahead and watch that. They kind of break down trade. It's uh, another one of those Jacob Clifford videos that kind of breaks down trade economically, but also kind of getting into more of the real world applications as well. Um, I would move on in the slide, but actually it's getting into a simulation that I still want to do when we ever we come back. Um, so I'm going to table that for now, but let me introduce your project that you're going to be getting into that should carry you throughout the week. Basically on your own, you're going to be analyzing various means of both helping support trade, also things that help prevent trade. All right, so you're talking about trade barriers and trade stimulants. And by barriers, we obviously mean obstacles. By stimulants, we're meaning things that can help trade kind of flow better, make them trade easier, make it more likely, make it more accessible. Um, so I'm gonna put this assignment up on Google Classroom, but again, you're gonna look into various means of 
trade barriers and trade stimulants, um, but I'll explain that on the assignment itself. I just want to give you guys a little heads up. So again, please go ahead and go through this recorded lecture. I'm not going to post the actual slides themselves because they contain directions for the simulation I still want to do, but I'll post the, uh, the link to the crash course and obviously this video. So as always, if you have any questions, please let me know and I'd be happy to answer. I'm available via email. Um, but I said that, thank you guys for listening in. Hopefully it wasn't too bad. And uh, we'll get into the next concept in the following week.